Welcome everybody. Thank you so much to teaching and learning with video. So my name is Sarah Thomas, AKA Sarah the teacher. So if you are a Twitter person, then uh, we can connect at Sarah the teacher. I love connecting with fellow educators and talking talking shop about education. And if you're not a Twitter person, I would highly suggest that you check it out. Um, you know, that's how I, I learn a lot. Um, a lot of the people in the room right now are great folks um, that I have met through Twitter and other uh, social networks, you know, right now, um, especially in this whole um, upsurge in remote learning, um, then it's very, very important to have a network and have that community. So I would highly recommend that if you're not already uh, connected on social media, that you do so wherever you are. So, um, so awesomeness. So super glad to have you here. Um, so just a couple of things really quickly before we begin. Um, this session is uh, sponsored by Microsoft, so we are going to be talking about Microsoft tools. Um, so those are the ones that that we'll focus on. It's overall pedagogy, though, so this is transferable to whatever tools that you decide to use, but I will be focusing um, on Microsoft tools. All right, so all of that being said, we're going to go ahead and um, get started. So I'm going to show you a video in just a second. You might not be able to hear it, so I will tell you what's going on on screen. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to make it as audible as I can, but I'm not gonna spoil it. Spoiler alert: it is a blast from the past, so the audio is a little muffled. Um, but right around this time period from this video that I'm gonna show you was the very first time that I fell in love. I don't know how many people can remember the very first moment you fell in love, but I was about eight years old, and when I saw it for the first time, I was just like, "Oh yes, this is it." So here's the situation. My cousin came from Miami and he had a camcorder, right? And there's a video that I had, but for some reason it didn't it didn't translate over. But I have this recorded, this recording home video where my dad is playing with the camcorder and he's like filming me, filming, you know, everyone at um at my grandma's house at the time. And I was in the background like, dad, can I see it after you? Dad, can I see it after you? And like at that moment I knew, oh my gosh, this is something that I want to do for life. So um, I went to school um, for radio TV film uh, for my undergrad. Um, and you know, I, I became alternatively certified as an educator, um, but that radio TV film background served me well uh, because you know, now we use video so much in the teaching and learning process, even more so nowadays um, with remote learning as a way to, to reach our students and, and to meet our students. The good thing is that now um, with all of the advances in technology, then it is very accessible and it's right at your fingertips. So you don't have to have specialized in this. You know, this is something that everyone can do. So super excited to share with you about teaching and learning in video. So. All that being said, I'm going to show you a video from 1991. You might not be able to hear the sound, but use your imagination. Okay, so the guy is trying to, uh, he's trying to watch a video. Sharp, clean image. Uh -oh. Sarah, okay. not clean. All right, so, Thank you so much. So I will I will explain to you what's going on in that video. Um, so there is a gentleman and he is frustrated because the video on his TV is not working, but the announcer is saying, notice the, the tones in his face, like the anger is just coming through. And um, so it's it's a video. Um, it is about the um, about a JVC camcorder. OK, so this is from from way back in the day. So camcorders back in the day, um, then see how um, how much do you think that they cost? Go ahead and put in a number in the chat. Go ahead, put in a, 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 oh, okay, great. I'm seeing that people are saying that they can press the, the play symbol. Um, they can press the play symbol on their own screen. So please play it on your screen and then you'll be able to take a look at it. Okay, so I'm seeing different figures being thrown out. Okay, um, so $200, 1500 2000 $300, $350, $700. Okay, 1000 $800, $2,000. Let me tell y'all, in 1991, not this exact camcorder, but um, but one very similar to it, 
back in the day would run you. All right, da, 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 seven hundred and ninety nine dollars. Seven hundred ninety nine dollars. That is crazy. And it was on sale, people. It was on sale. Alice, I see your comment. What is that in current dollars? <laughs> Good question, right? You got to think about inflation because 1991, oh my goodness, that was whew, close to 30 years ago. Mm, my goodness, right? Right? So 30 years ago, what $900 would have gotten you. <laughs> then, I mean, uh, that that's just crazy. They were huge. Yes, I'm seeing that in the comments. They were really, really big. Those monsters, you had to put them on your shoulder. Heavy? Absolutely. <laughs> now, I want you to think for a second. What can you buy for less than $700 that could do a lot more? The answer, spoiler alert, ding, 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 just about anything. <laughs> a phone, a drone, a laptop, just everything. It can do so much more, all of these things and more, okay? So we have access to all of this right at our fingertips and it is just, um, you know, it, we, can, we can even get a better quality and a better resolution than what you saw in the video. It's, it's crazy how far we've come in, in like 30 years. And I know 30 years feels like forever ago, but it's really not if you look at the grand history of just everything. All right. So shout out to all of the language arts teachers in the room. Do we have any language arts teachers in here? Just go ahead and uh, shout yourselves out. Okay, I see math. All right, let's give it up for the math people. Math people, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Now, language arts people, let's give it up for y'all. Whoop, 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 whoop. All right, and I see ceramics art. Yes, indeed. Spanish, social studies, everything. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So we have we have a great mix of folks in here. Spanish, fantastic. So what I taught, um, I've been in education now for going on 16 years. It's crazy. That's almost like that's almost like driver's license age, right? <laughs> if a kid was born the year I started teaching, they'd be probably, you know, getting ready to <laughs> melody, I see your comment. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, a kid born the year that I started teaching. Um, would probably be, you know, working on that learner's permit, getting ready to take the test for the driver's license. So I started teaching in 2004. Um, I taught in the classroom for a little more than 10 of those years. Right now, my current role is a regional technology coordinator. Um, okay, shout out 2004. I see you, Melody. Um, the bulk of what I did during that time is I taught English language arts and technology to some degree. I also taught um, fifth grade uh, standalone and first grade standalone, right? But the author's purpose was one thing that I kept circling back to and circling back to and circling back to author's purpose every year. So authors, so English language arts folks or language arts folks, you may know, so say it with me, the three author's purposes are to persuade, to inform, and to entertain, right? So those are, those are our three author's purposes. PI. Yep, absolutely. That acronym, PI. I love that. I never even noticed that. But yes, persuade, inform, and entertain. Now, when you're using video in the process, then I want to say that it's it's kind of an alternative tape because it's a different medium. It's still communication. You're still getting your message out there. And I mean, yes, absolutely. Persuade, inform, entertain. You can still do all of those things and more with video. But I like to think about like how how video has kind of grown um, over the years, right? As more and more people have had access to it through their phones, um, through low co lower cost devices. Um, and we've seen people doing some really, really cool things with video, okay? So Danielle, yeah, there's supposed to be something on the screen. You're supposed to be seeing slides six of 24. Um, so just let me know if you all are not able to see it um, in the chat, okay? so. Um, Danielle, maybe you might want to try to refresh and come back, possibly. Okay. So an alternative take on author's, pur on author's purpose when it comes to video is you can learn through video. You can also share things that you're saying, seeing through video. You can even use video to change the world, right? Wow. Like, it's crazy. It is crazy um, in terms of just 
how um, how different advances in technology have have just really changed the scope of our world over the past. I don't even know how long um, I did a, a publication um, with a couple couple of friends of mine, Regina Schaefer, Dr. Nicole Howard, um, and throughout the years we looked at like different things that that shaped ed um, ed tech trends over the last 15 years, I would say, um, from 2004 to 2019. And during that time, um, then we noticed that there were like pretty much three things that uh, that interacted, and two of them, I was well, one of them definitely has to do with video um, and possibly a second. But the first thing um, is artificial intelligence. So you see artificial intelligence that's being used um, more and more. You also have um, you also have social media, the rise of social media and how people use social media. And a lot of times, you know, people use uh, social media platforms to share videos, for example, Stream, Microsoft Stream um, and, and many others. And you also have people sharing videos on Twitter and things of that nature, right? Um, and the third thing is through um, is um, devices. Devices have just gotten better. So uh, <laughs> the um, there's there's one device that, that that I have right, and I'm probably two years back, two two years behind on the model. Uh, but still, like the the video that I can shoot on this phone. Even though it's like a, it's two years old, this is way better than the cameras that we were shooting on in college. I have to say, right? Um, so it's it's crazy how much things have changed. Okay, so oh yes, absolutely, absolutely. I'm looking in the chat right now about about transcript. Wow, it's it's just so awesome. All right, so why does any of this matter? Well, it matters because. A lot of our a lot of our students say that they're online almost constantly. So they um, a couple years back, then Pew did a study um, to look at teens social media use and you had kids pretty much uh, the percentage went up for uh, for how often teens said that they were online. And that's that's kind of like a, a, a dumb moment, right? Um, <laughs> we see that students more and more and maybe even ourselves were online more and more. I would love to see the figures from 2020. I'm sure that those will blow those out of the water. So in terms of smartphone access, so they um, in the same study, then they were looking at um, what percentage of students who say that they have or they have access to a and either of these um, desktop or laptop computer or smartphone at home. Now it doesn't say anything about the, the service. Um, it doesn't say anything about how many devices but um, overall, when they did the study back in 2018, then they found that most teenagers um, had some form of access to either a desktop or laptop computer or a smartphone. So there are, you know, so so our students, for the most part, many of them are looking at their their phones or you know a phone. Um, so that is part of why this is important. Now, in addition to this. Um, there's different platforms about uh, the ones that were most popular among teenagers. So, um, and just taking a look at this, then you'll see that most of these have one thing in common. Anybody know? Go ahead, put your uh, go ahead, put your answer in the chat. What do you think that these platforms have besides, you know, their social media platforms? People can follow one another. Video. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Most of these have videos. So YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, all of those things, they and more use video, okay? So in terms of even live streaming, you hear a lot about kids these days talking about going live. Oh, Michael, I love what you said, phone-related mobile, absolutely. So in terms of going live, this, is, this study is from January 2017. So this is three years ago. You can only, you know, throughout the years that I'm seeing that more and more people are watching live video, you know, or participating in live video. I mean, look at us right now, right? This is being recorded and, and you all are all here live. So, so these numbers are going up, up and up and up. But you see that our students, and they start at age 13, and, and I'm thinking that they're starting at 13 because of federal regulations such as COPA, um, where at the age of 13, students start making their own um, they start making their own decisions regarding their social media. So I believe that's where they started there. But I, I can tell you 
that um, um, I can tell you <laughs> that I've been on different platforms and there have been students there younger than 13, you know, sending me connection requests. And of course, that's like a no thanks, you know, but but they're on there, right? Um, so if they got that data from the platform, that's a good question. That's a good question, Alice. And honestly, I don't know the answer to that, but um, but I did see this and I thought that it was it was very interesting that most uh, or that many kids are either watching videos or creating videos um, online. And you see that's kind of going down with age, but I have a feeling that, you know, if you were to look at pull 2020 numbers, then it's probably through the roof. So what does this mean for us as um, as educators? This um, this pretty much means that we can meet our students where they are, right? A lot of us are doing it right now. I mean, there's really not a whole choice about it, right? Um, there's not a lot of choice in some some situations. So two models I want to talk about uh, today that you may be familiar with. The one on the left is a uh, flip classroom. The one on the right is the blended classroom, right? And a lot of us are doing remote learning, which may look similar to uh, to blended learning, okay? So in the chat, go ahead and type in um, if you've had experience using either flipped or blended um, instruction before. And Alice, I see your comments about your personal children. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, thank you all so much about the, the image choices. So the in class flip, absolutely. That was that was my thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing that that some people have done some, some have done a little, some have done neither. Okay. So let me just explain a little bit about what these are. Okay. So yes, Alice, absolutely. Catlin Tucker is someone fantastic. Um, uh, she specializes in blended learning and so many other things. So I would definitely give her a follow. Um, and Becca, I love the in-class flip as well. So pretty much this is a very brief definition of, of each one, just to just to kind of calibrate, right? Um, so with the flip classroom, traditionally you do a lot of uh, video, but the, the goal is to preload the front matter of um, what the students will be learning that day. So they watch it, you know, maybe when they go home, um, and then they come to class, you do the lesson and you restructure class to give them that time to work. And when they go home, they're learning the material. When they come to class, they're applying it, right? Um, Samantha, that is a great comment. And we are going to, we're going to talk about that explicitly um, in the next section. So absolutely, right? Um, so that is a flipped classroom in a nutshell. Um, now the blended, classroom is um, where you have a mix, you blend um, traditional methods of teaching with technology, and that tends to be very heavy on video as well. So, um, so it might look like, you know, the students watch a video and then answer some questions about the video, and it might be self-paced and self-guided, right? So those are two models of a um, of video that are popular um, in that are popular in the educational field, okay? Um, I did, um, and I see all of the questions about the um, about equity, and I'm so glad that y'all are thinking that way because that is coming up very shortly in the next section. Matter of fact, let's talk about it. What are some challenges that you can think of when it might come to, um, let's say, flipping, right? And equity, I will tell you, spoiler alert, is going to be number one. I've, I've presented on this probably since 2013. And every time except for one, um, then I have had, um, you know, that question has come up about equity. Okay. So I'm seeing they don't come prepared, kids not looking at videos, limited internet, having an environment at home to think of learning, no Wi-Fi at home, and now the libraries are closed. Yes. So these are really good, really good challenges, really good points. So the first challenge, like many of you stated, is access, okay? So I'm gonna share with you, there was a blog post that I did um, a little while ago, um, maybe about five years ago, and hopefully you all can see my screen, but if not, then just go ahead and click on the link um, that is at the top where it says challenge one access. And um, 
this is this is the full text of the blog post. It's it's been like maybe about five years, so you know they uh, they kind of restructured the blog, but I was sure to save it first. So this was written in um, 2015, and um, here there are five questions to ask about equity. So I'm not going to go through all of these right now. I'm not going to go through them in great detail, but I will just kind of scroll down a little bit um and and just address these so the first one if your students have access to smartphones okay so and before i dive into these questions let me let you know that none of them is a catch-all none of them is a catch-all they are each um they are each independent questions independent of one another so some of these may work for some folks some of these may not work right um, so if, if it doesn't apply to your particular situation, then there might be another question that does. But the first question, if your students have access to smartphones. So there was um, there was a student I had when I first started flipping and I'll, I'll kind of mimic the situation. So pretend that I am the student, right? So the student came up to me, cell phone in hand in class and said, you know, I tried to watch the video at home, but you know, I, I I couldn't get online. I, I don't know, you know, like I couldn't I couldn't do it. And so I asked, um, OK, well, what, um, you know, what's in your hand? Oh, cell phone. And I said, OK, what do you do with your cell phone? And she said, you know, I just watch like Little Wayne or whatever, listen to the music. And I was just like, OK, well, you could also listen to Little Miss Thomas. <laughs> so that was <laughs> so a lot of times when students have these devices, they don't necessarily think of them as ways um, to uh, to potentially access the materials, but not all students have smartphones and not all students um, will have their smartphone necessarily activated. Not all students will have, um, you know, as I'm seeing in here in terms of um, support, right? Um, so let's go down to the next question. So sometimes there there is um, a Wi-Fi hotspot in the neighborhood. I can say that in my neighborhood there is a Wi-Fi hotspot, but um, that one, I would say, is not something to take for granted. Um, I've seen some people meaning well, but kind of expecting students to go to the library and things of that nature, and that's not always possible depending on, you know, what's going on in the student's home life, right? Um, but if they do happen to have access, that's a question that you could ask them, you know, do you have access? Um, what other tools are available, right? Um, so sometimes there may not be um, the internet turned on. Um, there may not be a device. Right, exactly. Some some families don't even have vehicles. Absolutely. Um, so sometimes there is a tool very capable um, to play DVDs in the house, right? So one thing that you can do is um, potentially get a spindle of DVDs for uh, $20 and just burn the content to the spindle of DVDs. That has been something that was beneficial. In addition, um, now this is more so when we are face to face. Um, if the school has internet access, then there's different, um, I love what uh, someone said, I think, S Sandra, I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, but, um, but about how school is the safe space. A lot of times um, that is where, you know, students will have access to um to hot meals or to um to internet right so using the school as an access as a resource to um deliver the um you know to to provide that 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 utility is one thing that can be done so there's one thing that i used to love to do in my classroom which was the third bullet point hosting viewing parties where the students would watch the flips um, during lunchtime with their friends. So I called them parties for a reason. Everyone was invited. Um, and it was kind of a way to build that connection, to socialize, and also to um, also to to provide access to those videos, right? Okay. There's also a fifth question about resources that the school has available. OK, and if this is not allowing you, I will I will definitely go in and, and change the sharing settings to this. Um, so thank you so much in the chat for uh, for letting me know. So uh, absolutely, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure to update it at the end of the presentation and I will relink it. Sure. I'm not okay? seeing this challenge. Where did you put it? I put it um, 
at the top of the slide where it says challenge one access. Um, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, but if it's not giving you access when you click on it, then I will, um, I'll definitely tweak that at the end of the session and I will, um, I will repost the link. So thank you all so much and sorry for the tech difficulties, you know. Um, so in terms of question five, what resources your school has available? So um, there are some schools and some districts I'm seeing, and, and right now during remote learning, I'm seeing this happen as well, um, where some schools or districts are checking out uh, devices or mobile hotspots and or mobile hotspots to um, to the educator, or I'm sorry, not to the educators, my fault, to, <laughs> to students and to families. So um, thinking of the resources that um, that the school may have available or the district may have available is another thing that can be done. OK, all right. So all right. And thank you so much. I am seeing in the chat about the um, about the the access to the document. So I'll be sure to get that fixed and posted for you at the end of the yeah, session. The problem is because it's shared to SharePoint with Teams, it won't let you share outside the domain. So if it's OK with you, I'll download it and add it. OK, thank you. Thank you so much, Alice. So that is awesome. Yes, and I see Becca saying that um, there are school buses in areas providing hotspots. So absolutely. And once again, the article was from 2015. So that was a couple things to get you started. Um, but now there's even more that's out there. Um, you know, in terms of digital equity, then I would highly recommend um, COSIN has a digital equity toolkit. So I would say um, definitely take a look um, at that and that could give you more information, okay? All right, so the second challenge, thank you so much, Alice. So I see that she has posted it in the chat, so much appreciated. All right, so the second question is about accountability. So some people were saying that, like, how do you know if the students did it? So true story, around the beginning of my flipping journey, um, when I was teaching English language arts and I saw all of the, um, there were some issues that my students were struggling with. And I was just like, all right, let me just make this video so that I can address all of these concerns and just like have this video so that the kids can go back, they can look at, um, and it'll just knock everything out. And I tried to be creative with it, tried to be cute and <laughs> did like a Tonight Show top 10 list type thing. So I post this on YouTube and I asked the students, OK, go ahead um, and, and watch this. And oh, and I forgot to mention it was about 30 minutes long. Guess how many students actually watched it? Guess how many hits I had when I went back to look at the due date? Go ahead, put it in the chat. I, I want to see if anybody can hit it. So three, one, you got it, Sandra. Yes, one. I had one view and that view sadly was from me. <laughs> so I had absolutely no, like, even if, you know, even if of my 75 students, um, even if there had been five or 10 or however many um, watching it, I wouldn't know necessarily who had watched it. Um, and, you know, so I, I had no way to, to know. So what I would suggest um, in this case, there are lots of, um, there are, there are several tools out there that will um, allow you to, you know, kind of put in quizzes and stuff like that. But I want to give a shout out. I just sat in yesterday on Tara's Microsoft Forms session, and I saw that um, that the forms were very easy to create. So what you could do is put your video in there and have your students answer questions about it. Now, truth be told. Um, I'll tell you towards the end of my flipping journey and I still I mean there's really no end because I've still been doing it right uh, just in a different setting not with my not with my um, actual um, not with actual k-12 students but more so with um, with adults but um, what I found that has uh, that has been helpful is having it as a supplemental resource that's that's my style but whatever you um, you know your students best. So whatever you feel would be beneficial for your students, and there's no right or wrong way to do this, um, but I don't require the students to watch the videos anymore. Um, if they already know the content, they're familiar with the material, then it's just like, okay, go. But if you need this as a resource, then it's here for you. So absolutely. And I'm seeing, I'm seeing your comments right now. Absolutely. Um, 
having a shorter video is best. I love that, Alice and Becca. I love what you're saying. Um, yeah, that's definitely <laughs> one thing that I learned. Keep it simple, right? Um, if you have like a long concept, then that video was not a good idea. Like a 30 minute video was not a good idea for middle school kids. No, nobody's gonna sit there and watch me talk at them for 30 minutes, right? <laughs> like without any kind of interaction or anything like that. So, um, so pretty much what I learned from that experience was to kind of chunk it and have like shorter videos. And that way um, kids could access the videos, you know, whenever it was convenient for them. So, um, and they could split it up into different times. So, um, Patsy, I'm seeing that you're saying four minutes. Um, yeah, four minutes. I, I think that, you know, depending on the topic and depending on what you do, then, I mean, that, that sounds reasonable. Um, I like to keep it under five, um, but the shorter, the better, <laughs> as long as it covers the concept. Um, so absolutely. And if it gets any longer than that, then kind of breaking it into, uh, different chunks. Absolutely. They can go back and watch it again for review and test prep and things of that nature. Absolutely. So great stuff. All right. So going into another challenge, a lot of people, um, a lot of people, whenever I ask for challenges, then one thing that, um, that I would hear back is that, oh, you know, I'm afraid this is going to take me a lot of time. Well, I'll be very honest. When I started, it did take me a lot of time, but that was because two reasons. Number one, I did not know how to be efficient with it yet. And number two, I'm a perfectionist when it comes to some things. So um, so I would like sit there, do it over and over and over and over. And that's what took the time. But eventually, you know, I, I got to realize that my students weren't necessarily looking for perfection. You know, I would get it to like a good quality. Um, and, and then after that, just put it out there. But it doesn't have to be like Steven Spielberg or, <laughs> you know, or Ava DuVernay, um, just, just bring yourself and, and just, you know, just, just be your, be yourself. Right. So, um, it doesn't have to take forever. Um, a lot of times if I want to explain a simple concept and the video is two minutes long, it might take me, I don't know, maybe three minutes to do it. Right. Like with the setup, the, you know, with setting it all up and then stopping the video and things like that. So, so yeah, absolutely. And I love, love, love the tips that you all are sharing. Oh my goodness, this is gold. So 60 second video gets way less views than the 59 second video. Absolutely, Alice. Also, don't talk slow, don't repeat yourself. Absolutely, less than four minutes will help it pop up in the YouTube video. This is great. Um, yes, I love what you're saying about the Jiffy. Mm -hmm, absolutely, you're seeing more and more animated GIFs. And if those are, for those of you who may not be familiar with it, it's like a short video clip with no sound on it. So um, so it's usually about 30 seconds or so. And I've seen more and more people do videos of, here's how you can do X, Y, and Z, right? But like you have that short 30 second clip. I might've said 30 minutes, I'm at 30 second. So you have that short 30 second clip um, that just kind of demonstrates how to do something really, really quickly. So that is awesome. All right. Yes. And I love what you're saying, Alice. Double speed. Absolutely. Um, I don't watch anything on single speed. <laughs> it's all double speed. All right. And to snag it to make um, GIFs or GIFs super easy, however you decide to pronounce the word. Um, <laughs> right. But Alice uh, posted a great link. So definitely check out her blog post. OK. Awesomeness. 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 So about time. I also want to say that one thing I learned about time is that um, these can be a time saver. Like I taught high school very, very briefly. I taught it for a little over a quarter. And during that time, I had six periods that I taught. Um, three of one section, uh, two of another, and one of a third one. So for that three, um, that class I taught three, three times, the technology design class, then it saved me more time to record myself going through the content, you know, with the uh, presentation and bringing in supplemental materials. Um, I did that once and then I gave it to my students. I was just like, here you go. And that beat me, you know, standing up front and saying the same thing <laughs> over and over um, three different times. So that was such a great time saver. And another really good thing is that once you create these materials, you have them and you can reuse them. Um, I remember, you know, I did, I did one one time, um, about figurative language. I know I, I have figurative language on the brain for some reason, but I did one for figurative language. No, I'm sorry, excuse me. It was argumentative writing. 
And, you know, I went into um, I went into school and the kids were just like, wow, you know, you look so much younger in that video. <laughs> you know, it's just like, yeah, that was from a few years ago. So they're like, oh, you know, you had braids in there and now you don't. And, you know, and I was just like, yeah, yeah, I just reused it. <laughs> so so it is actually a time saver. So absolutely. Now, the third one. And I would love to see your hands go up if this is you. Or I should say the fourth one, the fourth challenge, nerves. Do any of you get nervous um, when it comes to seeing yourself on video? I'm seeing some hands, okay? I'm seeing some hands. So I know I'm not alone. I'm not alone here, right? Everyone does, absolutely. Oh my gosh, it, it, it can be nerve wracking. So, <laughs> so, the good thing is that there's different things that you can do um, if you get nervous about being on video. Like one thing, um, there's tools out there that you can use where you don't even have to show your face, right? So that's one thing that that you could do. You could do like um, the GIF GIFs, right? You could do a screen recording, whatever. Um, you can also edit the video. Like that's another thing, another option. Um, you know, there's different tools out there that you can use to edit videos and just make them however you want them. Um, Another great thing is that you can have the kids make the video. Yes, have the kids um, flip the class for one another. You know, they they learn the material and they explain it to their friends. Oh man, I think that that sometimes it's cool to you know for them to do it, and in that way they they learn it super well, so they can teach it to others. So awesomeness. And one more, I have a bonus link right here. So you might want to click alongside with me because I don't think when I click it's going to open on your screen. But um, this one is how to get used to the educator in the mirror. So this is a, a blog that I wrote back in, oh goodness, 2018. So now this is two years old. But, um, you know, a couple of things you can do. You can practice. So um, if you want to do a run through, then you absolutely can. You can also get eyes on it. So share it with a colleague or a student to say, hey, you know, how does this look? Is this good? Um, and get their feedback on it. You can not get eyes on it. So um, if you, this is this is one of my secrets, right? I like to go live as much as possible because I know like when it's done, it's done. And I don't have to go back and edit, right? Cause it's already done. It's already laid out for me. Of course, if it's horrible, then I'll just delete it and start over. But it's usually not that bad. Like, um, I don't know if, if you all uh, follow Tim Ferriss, but um, his his book, The the um, four, four Hour Work Week. And in the beginning, he was talking about um, something being 90% good is still an A, right? But <laughs> um, so what's the difference between the 90 and the 99? The 99 might take you years to get there, but if it's like 90% and it's and it's good, then, you know, sometimes just roll with it. So that works. And um, in addition, um, in addition, if all else fails, then you could just take the video out, take the video out and put it as like an audio, uh, put it as a podcast. Podcasting is super big now, right? So that could be something that you could share with your students. All right. So that's a little bit about um, some of the challenges um, that I hear when it comes to uh, teaching and learning with video. So a couple of things about how to use video, right? There's two main ways uh, that I've come across. There might be more, but these are just <laughs> kind of my observations. So the first one is to borrow. You can borrow videos. There's videos everywhere you turn. like on social media, on different platforms. Um, as Alice is saying, you can share them easily in Microsoft Teams, absolutely. You can find videos everywhere. Um, inserting videos into PowerPoint and you can make it multimedia, absolutely. I love that, Alice, yes. So there are different videos available to you from all over. Um, I believe there is, let me see. Yeah, so there are videos that are available to you from all over. All right, so moving on to the next slide. The next thing is that you can create your own. You can create your own videos. I This is my favorite. This is my personal preference. And the reason that I love creating my own videos is because you can like kind of customize them to the needs of your students and to the interest of your students. And, you know, they, they might act like they're too cool, but they enjoy seeing you on video. You know, they enjoy, that's that's yet another way to uh, connect with them, right? So they enjoy seeing your face. They enjoy hearing your, in my case, corny jokes, <laughs> you know? Um, even though they may moan and groan, it is all good. So 
I have an example linked onto the next slide. You may have to press uh, play. Oh, thank you so much, Alice. I appreciate your comments. Yes, indeed. And <laughs> Sue, I see you. Um, but I have an example on the next slide. Now, this one is a little longer than my usual would be. This is six minutes long. And this would be a classic of example of, wow, Sarah, you look so much younger in that video. Yes, because that one's from 2014. <laughs> so, but you can um, just kind of go through it um, whenever, you know, at your at your leisure. Um, I'm, you don't have to go all the way through it, but it's just kind of an example of what um, of what students, uh, what you might do for your students. So let me see, I'll play a little bit. Okay, you are here for the oh, and I should say also that um, you can, you know, I, I know now that you all cannot see it when I click on it. So if you want to click on it on your screen, I'm just going to play about maybe, uh, maybe about the first 30 seconds. Video of the argumentative writing series. So this is going to help you um, outline your, your body. Hopefully you can hear. And um, support for your, for your argument. So if you were with us last time, we talked about how to do our introductory paragraph. We looked up attention grabbers. We looked up how to cite um, information and um, came up with different points. If you remember, then I had a little bit of trouble coming up with the point C, but what I did is that Okay, so that's exactly 30 seconds. So, so the really cool thing about it is that um, this video was kind of dry, <laughs> but I know that when I got a little bit more experienced with um, with the whole flipping process, then um, it was a lot easier for me to to kind of loosen up and joke around with my students the same way that I would do in class. So they really enjoyed that. Um, and, you know, so that that was that was that was cool. And I enjoyed making them. OK, so Sue, I see your comment. And right now I'm moving on to slide number 20, 22. OK. Now I'm going to show you <laughs> an example of a video where I went totally crazy. Um, just so you know, there's not one way to do um, video. It's it's however you want to do it. You can be as silly as you want to be. You can be as um, you know. You can be as um, as straight up you know as you want to be. However you want to do it. You know your students best. You know your personality best. So this one that I did on slide number 22, um, <laughs> this is an animated one and there's tools out there. There's various tools out there that you can uh, do to, um, you know, to, to have animated videos and you just use your voice and, you know, it records for you. Um, so I did one for my students. We were simulating a draft, right? Like, um, like an NBA draft uh, because I was a basketball coach at the school at the time. And so I had an animated video. The um, the avatar's name was Nacho. Um, and we had uh, an inside joke in the class. Whenever we would play games, you know, the games that you would have like a pseudonym for and everybody could like kind of respond on their devices and stuff like that. Then I would always kind of sneak play alongside of them. And <laughs> I would go under the pseudonym, the pseudonym of Nacho Mama. So our um, narrator's name is uh, Nacho for the draft. So what I what I did is created this animated video um, using a tool and you know I I will I'll play it for you. Hopefully you can play it on your end and see the video, but um, you can probably hear the audio from mine. So I'll play it. OK, captains, here's how it's going to work. We're going to go right down the line. First person will get first pick. Second person gets second pick. Third person gets third pick and so on. Then after that, we're going to go backwards. The last person will have first pick all the way back up to the first one. And we're going to do this until all the teams are picked. So some teams might have four, some might have five, some might have six, but we're going to try for an average of five. So good luck and make good decisions. Okay, so that was that was kind of our um that was kind of our um that was kind of our intro to the um to, to the draft for that year. Uh, and Sue, um, to answer your question, then it's all about trial. You know, we're all learning this together. So this is um, one of my first times using Teams. And I know that that um, that there is the option to share, um, you know, to share the PowerPoint. So um, so I really wanted to use this because I thought that it would be, you know, I, th I thought it was a really cool tool. So absolutely. Um, so 
just really quickly, I wanted to feature um, a quick tool for you. I'm not going to go into a demo because there are some great sessions on this tool, Flipgrid. Uh, Kathy, who popped in a little earlier, she talked about um, she's going to be doing a session about flip hunts. So definitely check her out on the 31st of May. Um, and that's going to be 9 to 10 Eastern Standard Time. So that is the Flipgrid tool. Um, so I have a challenge for you because I know that our time is starting to run out. So I would like for you all, if you choose to accept your mission, so your mission, if you choose to accept it, did it in, did it in, did it, did it, right? This is like my spy music. Um, <laughs> but you can use a video creation tool of your choice and create an educational video posted to hashtag Microsoft EDU, hashtag GETA, hashtag we are Q. And also, please tag me in it. I'll put my Twitter handle up on the final slide, which is about to come your way. Absolutely. So let me do uh, let me do this here. So hashtag Microsoft EDU, hashtag GETA, hashtag we are Q. Thank you, Alice. Yeah. So and also tag me at Sarah the teacher. Um, and I can't wait. I can't wait to see your videos and see what you all come up with and what you create. So once again, this has been teaching and learning through video. The Flip Hunt webinar is 9 a.m. Pacific time. Um, thank you, Alice. Yes, the hashtag, um, try that link as well. But um, if you want to connect on Twitter, at Sarah the teacher is my handle. And um, if you have any questions um, at this point, you know, feel free to unmute and ask them and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Oh, and before before we do that, I just want to say I have office hours as well that will be coming up um, at two Pacific, so five Eastern. So if you have any questions that don't get addressed during the session, then um, I will be there then as well. So awesome. Thank you all so much for joining. All right, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Becca. I appreciate that. Thank you all so hey, much. Hey, Sarah, do you, is this time for questions? Is that what yes, you're doing? Absolutely, Melody. Okay, so like if we want to get better at this, what, what what else kind of like PD would you recommend um, for us to start working on that we can do, but you know, like in our time right now? That is a great, great um, question. I would say one place to start um, is definitely um, the the q.org forward slash Microsoft. You know, there's going to be a, a lot of sessions going on until, you know, for the next few weeks. And so uh, that would be a great place. And I would also say, let me see, there's a lot of a lot of events that are going on as well. Um, I used to I used to actually curate them and put them out. Um, if anybody knows of some, please put them in the chat. But um, yeah, there are definitely some um, some great events going on. One that comes to mind for me is um, EdChange Global. So um, I know that there will be sessions going on there as well. Um, and of course, you know, on the different social media platforms, I know that you are the guru, Melody. <laughs> so there's some great Facebook groups and great uh, Twitter chats um, where you can definitely participate. So, so yeah, great question. Thank you. So thanks, Sarah. Thank you. Sarah, what do you use for lighting? Oh, for lighting. Good question. So I wish that I could, okay, turn my <laughs> turn my uh thing over without totally just knocking down everything. But there is um a light ring that I have. It's not currently on. Um, but if you um they they have some really good and really expensive light rings. Um the one that I have is kind of like a big monster because I didn't realize it. It was going to be this big at the time, but I have kind of a smaller portable one. And um, yeah, so they have some great light rings online. You know, I would definitely look at the ratings and uh, just choose wisely. But but yeah, great question. Sarah, can you recommend an app or tool for editing your videos? I usually use iMovie, but is there something better? Um, I would say like. Okay, I get so Windows Movie Maker. I know is um, Windows Movie Maker is available. 
Um, I would say if, yeah, Microsoft Movies Maker. I'm, I'm so sorry, Alice. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, but there's there's several there's several um, different editors, um, several different editors available. I know that right now, um, you know, yeah, there's several different ones available. Um, but uh, I, I'm so sorry, Alice. I'm getting all flustered. <laughs> Let me stop the recording. But um, but yeah, definitely uh, Microsoft uh, Movie Maker is a good one. Um, and there's several other ones out there too. So so we is can that, also is that like a more. PC desktop app? That is a that is um, for the PC desktop. Yeah. And Alice, okay. please correct me if I'm wrong. Alice K. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Alice A here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'll look into that one and see if I like that better. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, that, that's true. That it just as you said, it's a Windows, it's Windows Movie Maker. So that would be for your Surface tablet and your Windows devices. Um, yes. So I usually will upload my videos to my iPad so I can use iMovie to do edits. But I I would prefer something for my PC laptop. So this is actually good. I'll look into it. And it's it's already probably installed most likely it's it's part of windows that is possible and i've just never looked okay thank you very much right. thank you alice and nora i'm seeing your question about a microphone um i could tell you the one that i use uh the blue yeti blackout is one that i use it's kind of heavy duty um but i from what i've seen then then sometimes the usually the laptop on your computer will pick up um just fine um, but if you do want to get a little more oomph to it, then um, that's the one that I currently use. So, Sarah, can the microphone on our headset, does that work too? Or do we absolutely. have to have like a good mic? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. The only reason that, that I kind of went um, pro line on it is because I also do a podcast. So, um, but, but really use whatever you have at your disposal. If I can share a anecdotal story is I have all these boxes of all of my computers that I bought over the years. And then I thought, I don't need these anymore. And I threw them out. And then it turns out those were actually acting as like sound um, buffers. So when I took it out and then I tried to make video, the whole room echoed so badly. Oh. So then I just basically been collecting Amazon boxes to keep in the room to control the echo. <laughs> Yeah, that is a really, really good point. Like, um, if you're recording, then, you know, carpeted room uh, works really well. You might see behind me um, and to the sides of me, I have some soundproofing that I kind of did myself. So it's not quite, <laughs> it's not quite as professional or even. Um, and I probably did, in all honesty, wreck my walls. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. But you can get a, a similar effect by having um, different um you know, different uh, things in, in the room to, to muffle the noise. And I'm seeing Nora's question about my podcast name. It is Edumatch Tweet and Talk. So um, absolutely. Oh, team's background blur. Thank you, Alice. Let me see here. All right. My background blur. Oh, I'm going to. OK. Show background effects. Yeah. There we go. Okay. And let me, let me see. Lots of, lots of different backgrounds you can use, right? Oh, yeah. Hey, Brett. Hey. <laughs> I woke up nice and early, 6 a.m. here in Australia. I woke up nice and early to uh, see your session, Sarah. Hey, oh. Alice, how you doing? <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for being here. It's so great to see you. So, yeah. That is fantastic. Oh, Melody, thank you so much. I see your your uh, comment. <laughs> much appreciated. Oh, man. All right, cool. So we still have a few minutes left. So if there's anything, um, if, if there are any questions, you know, I'm more than happy to answer them. I also want to put a plug in for office hours. I'll be there in a little over half an hour. So that'll be that'll be really cool. Let me actually stop presenting. And there we go. All right. Oh, I see your, your background blur, Alice. Nice. Very, very cool. All right. Since I've got that green wall, mine works better. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. <laughs> hey, and I see Tara. Hey, Tara. <laughs> very cool. 
Oh, hey, mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Y'all are great. Thank you so much for the comments and thank thank you all for just everything for being here and just yeah, this is this is great. Well, nice job, Sarah. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. All right. So I'm gonna stop the recording right now. Okay. And